a fleet of NASA spacecraft are turning their attention to an unusual object speeding through our solar system. What if the first truly clear picture of an honest-to-goodness alien comet, a cosmic wanderer from beyond our sun, almost vanished forever? What if it was just moments away from being deleted, from being lost to the digital ether because someone somewhere clicked delete on a server, or worse, just let it expire? What impeccable timing indeed. In July 2025, while the world was busy doom-scrolling through a seemingly endless stream of bad news, a scrappy, dedicated Discord group stumbled upon a chilling realization. NASA's public data portal was about to go dark. The prize? Raw, unprocessed frames of 3i Atlas, the third interstellar visitor ever seen by human instruments, and by far the most intriguing. They had one weekend, zero funding, and a single desperate goal grab every bite of that precious data before the plug was pulled. Spoiler alert, they made it, with 43 minutes to spare, and what they found in those images absolutely rewrote the guest book for how comets from other star systems behave. This video is sponsored by Upstream. Want to grow your YouTube channel faster? With Upstream, you can run a 24-7 live stream using your pre-recorded videos. Since live streams rank higher in search, you'll gain more views, more subscribers, and more revenue. And it's not just YouTube. Upstream lets you multi-stream to up to 10 platforms, design custom layouts that match your brand, and schedule your content so your channel is live even when you're not. Sign up free today with the link in the description, and if you decide to upgrade, you'll get 20% off your first month. Start streaming smarter with Upstream. Most heroes don't wear capes. They wear grocery store hoodies and keep slack open on a second monitor, fueled by lukewarm coffee and an insatiable curiosity. This core team? Just five incredible individuals. There's a Kansas science teacher who, for fun, builds elaborate model rovers in his garage. Then a sharp Portuguese undergrad, coding in Python between classes, her fingers flying across the keyboard. A night shift nurse from Toronto, whose quiet hours often involve monitoring more than just vital signs a retired radio engineer in Brisbane whose seasoned eyes can spot a data anomaly a mile away, and finally, a Utah college dropout who wrangles telescope data for a side hustle, turning complex numbers into understandable patterns. None are NASA employees. None get paid a dime for this. What unites them, what truly drives them, is that exhilarating rush of watching raw numbers transform into genuine discovery in real time. When the Atlas Telescope in Chile first spotted this new, enigmatic comet, these citizen scientists didn't just see a faint smudge. They saw the trajectory, they did the math, and they realized with a jolt that Mars orbiters would get the closest camera angle humanity would ever have of this interstellar interloper. Public download links were live, a treasure trove of potential insights. But then came the dreaded maintenance notice, a stark warning of an extended outage starting Monday. Translation in their world, grab it now or lose it forever. This wasn't just another routine shutdown, it felt like key public access shutting down precisely when we needed real-time updates on what might be the most unusual object ever seen in our solar system. This isn't just another cosmic snowball. This is 3i Atlas, a true interstellar traveler. It came from somewhere else in the galaxy, a distant star system we can only imagine, zipped between the stars for untold millennia, and will never, ever return once it leaves our solar system. Think of it as a postcard stamped in another solar system delivered by accident to our cosmic doorstep. Every molecule it sheds, every wisp of gas, every speck of dust tells us how chemistry works beyond our immediate neighborhood. It's the third confirmed interstellar object, following 1i Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, yet it presents unique characteristics that make it a significant outlier. The Mars fleet, specifically ESA's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, TGO, and Mars Express, were poised to snap images roughly a thousand times closer than any Earth telescope could ever manage. Factor in the comet's staggering faintness, it was 10,000 to 100,000 times dimmer than what those cameras usually see, and you begin to grasp why professional teams hesitated. Data storage is expensive, priorities shift, servers get cleaned. Bureaucracy, security protocols, and shifting politics often mean priceless data can sit behind broken links, or worse, simply vanish. Citizen scientists, however, they had no such red tape. They just needed bandwidth, grit, and an unwavering belief that this data was too important to lose. Friday, 1902 UTC. 
Teacher Rob, his heart pounding, hits refresh on the NASA HTTPS page. It throws a 404 error. Panic. A cold dread washes over the Discord channel. 30 seconds later, a collective gasp of relief as the site reloads. Maintenance postponed until 00 Monday. Cue the most productive, frantic, and caffeinated group chat in hobby astronomy history. They divvy up tasks with military precision, but civilian ingenuity. One writes a wedge get script designed to skip duplicates and handle partial downloads, a digital lifeline. Another, eyes glued to marketplace listings, rents cl cheap cloud space, a temporary sanctuary for the incoming torrent of data. Yet another, crowdsources a Google Sheet, a digital battle plan, so volunteers worldwide can claim five-minute download slots, ensuring every corner of the globe contributes. By midnight, they have 312 helpers, a global network of digital archaeologists. The goal sounds deceptively trivial. Move pictures from a public server on a private drives. Reality, of course, is always messier. Files average a hefty 1.2 gigabytes each. Issei's repository, in its infinite wisdom, uses an odd naming convention that scrambles the chronological order, adding another layer of complexity to the already Herculean task. Download speeds swing wildly, from a blistering 80 megabytes per second to a soul-crushing 8 kilobytes per second as traffic spikes and servers groan under the unexpected load. They learn which mirrors still work, set timers to auto-retry connections, and coax old laptops, wheezing and groaning, into running overnight. Saturday dawns and with it a glimmer of hope. 38% of the data is safe, tucked away on various hard drives across the planet. Sunday brings the kind of news that makes your stomach drop. NASA moves the shutdown to 0600 Monday to synchronize with scheduled maintenance. That chops nine agonizing hours off the clock, a brutal blow to their already tight schedule. Meanwhile, the comet's closest approach has come and gone. New images, even more precious, are uploading in near real time, adding to the ever-growing mountain of data. Every single frame is critical, a potential key to unlocking 3 Eye Atlas's secrets. The nurse, working a grueling 12-hour shift, uses every precious break time, her phone clutched in her hand, to restart stalled transfers, her dedication a beacon across the time zones. Brisbane Grandpa, ever resourceful, Daisy chains three external drives so his ancient iMac doesn't choke on the incoming data, its fans whirring a frantic tune. Python scripts auto-sort files by timestamp, but checksum errors pop up like a digital game of whack-a-mole, demanding constant vigilance and manual intervention. Sleep becomes a forgotten luxury. The dropout, crunching numbers with practiced ease, calculates they need 1.3 terabytes more. At their current crawl rate, they'll fall 90 minutes short. A collective groan. The solution? Beg, borrow, and steal bandwidth. Someone, in a stroke of genius, posts on Reddit. Strangers, moved by the urgency, lend server tokens, offering their own unused capacity. A European startup, hearing their desperate plea, donates gigabit fiber for four crucial hours. Momentum surges, a wave of global cooperation washing over the weary team. Monday, 4 UTC. The progress bar inches forward, agonizingly slow, hitting 97%, then a server throttle. The files trickle, a cruel tease. Discord voice chat goes dead quiet, save for the frantic click-clack of keyboards as fingers fly across keys, desperately trying to coax more data. At 0512, the last frame lands, a collective sigh of relief echoing across continents. Rob, his voice hoarse but triumphant, types check sum verified and screen caps the folder. 42,731 files, a staggering 1.78 terabytes. Collective exhale. They did it. 43 minutes later, the site greets visitors with the dreaded service temporarily unavailable. The data is gone from public view, but copies now live on six continents, safe and sound. One participant later jokes it felt like looting a burning library, except in this case, the books are safe on flash drives in sock drawers, waiting to be read. With the raw data finally secured, the real work, the scientific processing, begins. Stacking 400 exposures, a painstaking process, cancels out the digital noise and reveals the comet's bright nucleus, shrouded in a fuzzy coma and astonishing 18,000 kilometers across. The team meticulously measures a sunward jet, material blasting out at an incredible 600 meters per second, 
unequivocally proving that frozen carbon monoxide drives activity even at Mars distance. This isn't just a simple ice ball, it's a dynamic active object. The coma itself shows an odd asymmetry, lopsided by a noticeable 12%. Models suggest the nucleus spins once every 6.3 hours and wobbles, a subtle but critical hint that it likely suffered a recent collision in interstellar space long before it ever graced our solar system. But perhaps most stunning, a faint ion tail, completely invisible in individual frames, magically appears after a careful contrast stretch. It stretches an astonishing 56,000 kilometers, gently curved by the solar wind, a testament to the comet's interaction with our sun's magnetic field. No Earth scope, no matter how powerful, had resolved that intricate detail. The Mars orbiters caught it only because the distance was a scant 4 million kilometers. Scientists now writing the discovery paper are calling the data set priceless, a true gift from the cosmos salvaged by sheer human will. They're already speculating on its composition, its origins, and whether its unexpectedly large mass makes it a significant outlier among interstellar objects. True to their ethos, the team members unanimously agree these files belong to everyone. They meticulously organize and upload high-resolution packs to the Internet Archive, placing them under Creative Commons licenses. It's a bold statement, a clear message that discovery shouldn't be hoarded. Within days, professional researchers, some of whom had likely given up hope, download copies. At least three peer-reviewed papers are already citing this amateur rescue dataset. NASA and ESA, ever gracious, politely tip their hats on social media, acknowledging the dedication of citizen contributors. It's a quiet nod, but a powerful one, signaling a shift in how science is done. Headlines follow, celebrating this unlikely triumph. School classes around the world now use these very images to practice math, measure tail length, calculate speed, debate what alien ices imply about other solar systems. In effect, the outreach value multiplies the science return exponentially. One teacher who helped download now Skypes into classrooms worldwide, showing kids how a few curious adults armed with Wi-Fi and determination can sometimes move faster and with more agility than even the largest bureaucracies. It's a powerful lesson in collective action and the democratization of discovery. Space agencies, let's be clear, do absolutely amazing, groundbreaking work. But budgets, security protocols, and shifting politics often mean that priceless data can sit behind broken links or, as we've seen, vanish entirely. When everyday people pitch in, whether classifying galaxies from their living rooms, rescuing comet photos in a frantic weekend, or even mapping Mars dunes, science accelerates. It's not just a hobby, it's a vital contribution. You don't need a PhD, you don't need a lab coat, you just need curiosity and Wi-Fi. The very same weekend the Comet crew raced against the clock, thousands others worldwide were helping to map Mars dunes, tag penguin colonies in Antarctica, and hunt for distant exoplanets. Every single click, every bit of effort is a vote that says discovery belongs to the planet, not just the privileged few in the lab. If five dedicated volunteers can save an interstellar visitor's portrait from oblivion, Imagine what 10,000 or even 100,000 could do when united by a common scientific purpose. We are not powerless. We are part of the solution. Feeling that little spark, that tug of curiosity? That's the call of discovery. Join a citizen science project tonight. Links to the comet data, plus active missions that desperately need your eyes and brain power are all in the description below. Download, analyze, share what you find. Hit subscribe for more stories that prove you don't need a badge to reach the stars, just a burning desire to look up. History usually remembers the big rockets, the famous astronomers, the grand observatories, yet some of the most important, truly unique data of 2025 exists because a night shift nurse restarted a laptop at 3 a.m., because a retired engineer coaxed an old iMac back to life, and because a global community refused to let a cosmic treasure disappear. The next interstellar object could appear tomorrow. Maybe you'll spot it. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's already there, waiting for someone to notice. Until then, keep looking up and keep those hard drives spinning.